5 Reasons Why Consoles Are Better Than PCs And since this video is only 57 seconds long, I'm sure I'll be nice and quick in and out of this one. That's not what happened. So the first reason is consoles are generally much smaller than PCs, as you can see right here. Okay, first of all, who actually cares about this? Like, I keep seeing console guys bring this up, like, oh, the consoles are so much smaller. But, like, if the physical size of your machine is a deal breaker for you, first of all, you can just make a small PC. Second of all, you can get a laptop. Third of all, who actually cares about this? The reason it's bigger is because it's better. It's this is the way it is. My mid tower is uh, significantly bigger than this console. So with a PS4 or an Xbox, you can just throw it inside your backpack, bring it to your friend's house and game. Whereas with a PC, they're generally much bigger like this mid tower, or even if you condense them into a smaller size, they're still kind of big. Jeez, okay, there's another person bringing up the whole, like, well, you can bring it to your friend's house. But I mean, again, if, if that's something you constantly do, that's a different story, but like the amount of people who keep their console or PC in one place versus the amount of people who constantly move their gaming machine, I just don't feel like this should be a legitimate, like, main selling point. And I also love how you say like, oh, even if you make it smaller, it's still significantly bigger. No, there's an option to make it smaller. <laughs> If you want it smaller, you can do that. Consoles are generally also less expensive than PCs are. No, they're not. They're absolutely not. You can spend more than a console's price tag on your PC. You can. You don't have to. But usually what people will do is they will spend more money than the price of a console on their PC. But then from that point going forward, PC gaming is significantly cheaper. No required subscriptions. Much cheaper games. Much more variety in the games. Much cheaper peripherals. Much cheaper repairs. I mean, I mean fucking repairs period, you can repair your PC on your own. A much better secondhand marketplace, far more future-proof technology. I mean, there's still people running the 10 series of graphics cards perfectly fine. And you could even debate that the 10 series is running games better than the PS5 and Xbox Series X are. PC gaming is not more expensive than console gaming. The upfront cost of a PC will usually be higher than a console, yes. But over time, PC gaming is significantly cheaper. You are saving so much money by switching to PC. Of course, it's not always the case, but as you can see right over here, Xbox One S is only a couple hundred dollars. I like how you say a couple hundred, but the price tag literally says 300. Also, I saw some, I saw someone on OfferUp trying to sell an Xbox One S for $350 the other day. <laughs> like this dude was really trying to sell an Xbox One S for above market value. Console gaming, not even once. Uh, the PS4 is a couple hundred. No, again, 300. A couple hundred is 200. Do people not know what the word couple means anymore? And the PS4 Pro is about 400, so... You got that one right. Yeah, they're generally less expensive. Even with the next-gen consoles being around 500 to 600 ish, uh, they're still gonna be cheaper than most PCs are. The machines will be cheaper, and you will notice that cheaper price tag in the game performance. And they also have to make up for that cheaper price tag with other things. Hence why PC gaming is less expensive. Consoles are generally much easier to set up. All you have to do is plug in power, plug in internet if you want to. I mean, with a PC, you plug the power in, you plug the machine in. But like, I don't get the setup argument. You plug the machine into the power source, you plug it into your monitor, and you turn it on. That's the process for literally every gaming machine. And just turn on the controller and get gaming. With consoles, you also get some exclusive games, which might be appealing to you. Oh, exclusive games. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's a shame PC doesn't have any exclusive games. Just the, you know, PC gaming would be so much better if there were exclusive games, but there's no exclusive games. There's just none. There's no exclusive games. I've never seen an exclusive PC game. You've never seen an exclusive PC game. What's an exclusive PC game? And lastly, with consoles, you get pretty decent performance. I mean, surprisingly, with no, I did not cut off his sentence. He cut the video off. Here, I'll play it again. And lastly, with consoles, you get pretty decent performance. I mean, surprisingly, with- The absolute irony of talking about great optimization, and then you cut it off in the middle. Just like how the consoles cut your games off in the middle of them. There's only so much you can do with console hardware. I'm not saying all console games are poorly optimized, but a lot of them are poorly optimized. And if that game is poorly optimized, there's nothing you can do about it, because the console doesn't give you the option to do anything about it. The console is a closed machine with little to no graphical settings on games. So if the game is not well optimized, which is becoming more and more common these days, there's nothing you can do about it. Decent performance for the price? That's debatable. Not saying yes or no, just saying it's debatable. It really depends on what you define as decent performance. Personally, if a game runs below 1080p and below 60fps, that is unacceptable performance. It's 2021. There's no reason we should be under either of those things. 1080p 60, bare minimum. If it's not hitting that, it is not well optimized. Anyway, this was a nice and quick one. Whew, I'm recording like five videos today. 
I hope you learned something in this short, rapid-fire video of mine. Toodles.